Hi, I'm Natalie, and today I'm going to make for the Christmas season a Linzer Torte, which is this very delicious cake coming out of Austria. And what it really is, is a tarte which is made out of hazelnuts and then is filled with jam. And I'm going to make this cake gluten-free and vegan. I assume I wanted to make some pecan bourbon pie, but um, I didn't do it this year for Thanksgiving. So I need about 500 grams of hazelnut. Ha ha! Success! I found my hazelnuts! And in most European countries you can actually buy ground hazelnuts. Since I couldn't find any ground hazelnut flour here, I'm gonna grind my own. And I can use my food processor for it. Unfortunately, I have just 400 grams of hazelnut and I'm a tad too lazy right now to run to Holland and Barrett's. So I'm going to substitute it with another 100 grams of some kind of a nuts. Ah, look there. I still have another possible 100 grams. I got cashews and pine nuts, peanuts. Peanuts definitely not going to work. You know what? I'm going to use again pecans because I have so many of them. And I'm going to add my 100 grams of leftover pecans and I'm gonna grind them with my food processor. Sometimes I loosen them up a little bit and grind them a little bit longer. And technically you can make the entire cake in your food processor, but because not everybody has that and some other people might have been buying ground hazelnut flour, I'm gonna make it as if I wouldn't have a food processor. So I wanna start now adding the different ingredients into a bowl. And it is a very simple recipe. It's a great holiday cake, especially if you're a beginner. And you know what you can do too is, if you're not from Austria or Germany, you can make up the recipe or make some alterations to it. Most people wouldn't have tasted a Linzer Torte before, so... So here's my hazelnut flour. And I want to add 250 grams of my tart flour combination. And I'm going to add 100 grams of dark brown sugar and 100 grams of white sugar. And I need a dash of salt. Nope, that's too long. I did find the salt though, so one pinch of salt. A dash of ground gloves. I normally like to put a quarter teaspoon in it. And one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. So here are the mixed ingredients. And I'm gonna add it now to the hazelnut. One thing which is still missing is certainly the butter and eggs. So I do want to make this vegan and so I'm going to make some flaxseed eggs. It asks for two regular eggs, which is two tablespoons of flax seeds and four teaspoons of water. And I'm going to give it a quick stir. So here's what I have to do different. Now since I'm adding flaxseed eggs instead of eggs, I probably have to increase a little bit my butter or oil content just to keep the cake not to be too dry, because the eggs certainly add also some moisture to it. So the cake asks for 250 grams of butter, and what I'm gonna do is I'm pretty much gonna use about 150 grams of butter and 100 grams of oil, just to give the cake a little bit more moisture. Okay. So this is about 100 grams of oil, and then I need also the zest of one lemon. So I'm gonna use a fresh lemon and my grater, Actually, the zest of half a lemon is enough. I want like about two tablespoons. And I'm gonna add that now to my flour combination. I'm gonna add now my oil. And you can see also now how the flaxseed got completely absorbed by the water, like a creamy paste. And I'm also gonna add the butter now. So now I'm gonna mix the ingredients with a spatula. And now I can start kneading it with my hand. And I'm gonna pour it now onto the table because my bowl is not big enough. But with a lot of the tart crust or tart crust based ones, if you don't have to do it in a food processor, you normally have to dump the content on your table 
to combine them. And you see how the dough is now coming together. Keep in mind, I don't use santum gum or guar gum or any other binding elements. I honestly don't think you need it. But on times when you make a cake, it makes it a little bit more fragile than you may like to. So because it feels a little bit fragile to me, I'm going to add a little bit more flour to it. Recipes are there to guide you, but water, content, temperature, altitudes may change on times the number of ingredients. So some of it you have to kind of measure by feeling, which I know it's like, how do you do that? You just feel kind of like how sticky and fragile the dough is and adjust the recipe accordingly. And you can actually feel now how the dough becomes a little bit less sticky. And that's really what I was looking for. You can let the dough rest now to get a little bit harder. You can also put it in the freezer to make it even easier to roll out. In this case though, I do have to go for brunch and so I'm gonna process the cake now. So I'm gonna half the cake dough, one will be for the top, and the other part I'm gonna use for the bottom of my cake. And I'm gonna roll it out now. And I assume that the cake is very brittle, especially because I didn't rest it. I could put it into a tart form, but in this case I'm gonna put it in a regular cake pan. And I'm expecting the dough to break, so I'm going to use a little bit of extra dough and fill in any of my cracks. And as you can see, I'm kind of just now adding some of the dough back in. Okay, so here's now the bottom of the cake. It's pretty even as well. I'm going to first add the jam, because the cake always has some jam. You normally use for a linza torte raspberry jam, but technically you can use any kind of jam you prefer. And you use about 200 grams. You want to give the cake a really nice coverage. So now the tricky part begins, the lattice situation. I'm going to use one third of my dough for the edge. So I'm going to cut it and put it aside. And this is the dough for my lattice. So I definitely need some flour for this. And normally I roll out a big sheet, but this time the dough is very fragile. So I need to be very careful how I'm going to go about it. The good thing is I don't have to have it super thin. I just need to have it not break apart on me. And what I like to use too is I like to use a ruler if I make lattices to make sure that the edges are nice and sharp. So I use the ruler and I cut it and I use it as my guide. And then I move it carefully to the side for the next lattice batch. You just see how it broke? Okay, that's kind of what you're trying to avoid. <sighs> Making lattices is, I think, very complicated. So what I did this time is I used my ruler as support so I can hopefully just slide it down. And yes, that worked much better. And I'm gonna use my ruler also a little bit for alignment. So maybe it is not a beginner cake because of the lattice part. Okay, boom, section one done. Now I have to make the cross pattern of it. Normally it's a woven lattice, but to be honest with you, this is a bit complicated and a bit fragile, so I'm not going to weave it. I'm trying to make the lattice as even as possible. There we go. Now I'm going to put again the cake ring around it, and I'm going to roll out the edge of the cake. So what I want to do is really create a little bit of a sharp little edge so it looks nice and pretty. So here's the finished Linzer Torte. And I'm going to put it now in the oven for 40 to 45 minutes at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. So I took out the cake yesterday after 40 minutes of baking time. And then I just let the cake cool down on the counter. So now I just want to decorate it a little bit and finish it up just that it looks a little bit prettier for the holidays. So I'm going to release the cake from the cake form. And if it's not the vegan version, I normally would just use a little bit of honey and brush it on to give it this really pretty shine. But this is a vegan cake, so I'm going to use some of my leftover jam. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water, maybe one tablespoon, just so it becomes a little bit more brushable. And I'm using now my kitchen brush or my pastry brush and just brush it onto the cake. And then the last touch is adding some toasted almond flakes. And you can toast your own, or in this case I just bought some. And you want to decorate the edge with it. And here's the finished cake. I hope you enjoyed today's show. And if you did, 
please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. And if you have any comments, feedback, ideas which I can try out, please make sure to add them below in the comment box. And I see you next week. Bye.